So I plonked that uh, car of mine over there in the uh, in that car park on the ground floor. Nice and easy to walk back to. Very, very few cars in there because um, it's still very early in the morning. It's just before nine o'clock. Um, I suppose most a lot of the car, a lot of the shops aren't even open necessarily. Oh, the Peterborough Tele Telegraph and Citizen. That's online. I had a look at it online. Um, they were talking about Cowgate, which is this, which Mark called Kaigiat. But thankfully, because of my Northern Irish friends in the past, I understood that he meant Cowgate from that. So it looks very nice and historic, old-fashioned. So this is historic, historic um, St. Petersburg. No, Peterborough, which is English for St. Petersburg. Um, it's our answer to St. Petersburg, but it's got no canals and things in. Uh, it's just got Peter in the name. So, uh, but anyway, like a second city because it's the alternative to London if you need to get your passport done. And thankfully, well, I can't knock it. If I can get the passport here, then if it works, then it works, yeah? But we'll find out whether it works or not. So there's a bit of a mystery because my appointment is from for 18 to 20, Cowgate. Cowgate's just that small area here. There's a queue of people outside the post office, but it doesn't say it's a passport office, which is really weird. Um, but it was the address that's given not only by the guy, but also an email by an um, uh, automatic generated what's it, uh, which is strange. Something's coming down there. There's, a, there's some church. Over there seems to be Peterborough Cathedral. I can't see it that way. So I'm going to... As town centres go in England, this is certainly a nice one. Let me focus up on that for you. That's nice enough, isn't it? Pretty impressive looking cathedral. And a nice historic centre. When I saw some historic Peter, Peterborough then on the on the signs, you know, saying come and visit, I thought, well... But it turns out that there are some very nice things, some old buildings as you can see there too, and this on the corner. Nothing wrong with that. So, uh, also a nice older church down there, old alley. It's a similar style, if you like, to the middle of Cambridge, which is, I suppose, got a lot of things from the same period. It's a town not far from here. So, yeah. I don't know whether they've got a university. I've never heard of anybody going to Peterborough University. Maybe there is one, I don't know. Maybe they call it something else. Now we have to see where it is I'm supposed to go. And thankfully, I gave enough leeway that, you know, I've got half an hour before I need to walk in through the door. Clearly there's a queue to the post office, even before the thing opens. You get to stand in a queue a long, long time before. That doesn't look too helpful. That looks as though you, you might end up getting a, a sizeable queue developing close to the time it opens. Maybe I'm just going to stand in there anyway. So, uh, but there we go. That's the only thing I can think of it being, other than this Britannic house here, but that doesn't seem to be it either. There doesn't seem to be anything in there or something in that courtyard there. But Cowgate is just basically this. I don't see more to it than that. I'll just check the courtyard, but other than that, I have to join the queue at the post office because that's the only thing it could be. That's 18 to 20 there. Chambers Courtyard. Maybe if I go in there, I'll see something. <clears throat> There's supposed to be a map on the site it gave a link to a map but the, that never seemed to materialise into anything. That's just the recruitment office and then that says 20, that says 18. So that's funny isn't it, 18 to 20. Good morning. I'm a problem. Mate, I've been getting. Yeah, of course. Um, this gentleman has come from the middle of the room. A long way to do a new priority. Okay. Check inside it. Yep. 
Hannah here has been advised incorrectly, so we need right. to ring the advice line and see what we need to do. Mm -hmm. No okay. at all. Um, you don't need to go anywhere in time. Okay. Please, have a seat. Yeah, thank you. Um, the only information that I got about helpline, to be honest, I could have read it for myself, because this is all they work from. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, that if, if the child is under 16, we cannot proceed, and that we must contact the advice line and find out what they suggest. Okay, so... So, we will give them a call. At the end of the day, you can see from my email that I got the advice or instruction Absolutely. to come here. But and sure understand there's, there'll be a recording there. underneath that, uh, hopefully underneath that. Uh, they say they record the these calls. Have, um, given us stuff information here. Well, they give different information again on these sheets which go through post offices. Yes. Gosh, they go through every single conceivable. <laughs> yes. Hi, my name isn't going to help in a way. My name is Jackie Webb. I'm manager at Peterborough City Post Office. We're offering the seven-day priority check-and-send service. I have a gentleman who's driven up from Hemel Hempstead, which is about a 200-mile round trip to Peterborough, with a reference number. However, it's for an application for a child's renewal. So, and we have been told that this is not part of the priority service. He has, however, got a reference number. What? Yes, 14-year-old child. Okay, can I put the gentleman on? Okay, thank you. David, Hello, David. Certainly. Mm -hmm. My name's David, like you. James. Yes, HP2, 5BP. Yes. It's 44 Alexandra Road, 26th of May 1964. Well, I, I received from your colleague Mark, whom you may or may not know, um, a reference number and an appointment at 28 to 30 Cowgate uh, at 9.30am this morning, uh, which I duly attended. 
okay, uh, only to be told that my child can't have the priority service done here. Yes. Yes, a child renewal. Now, we just came to England for a few days, and now my child's passport expired the day of entry. We have to go home to Poland, which is where we live, and there's also, I've also got travel booked for Thursday morning because I didn't realise five years ago we had um, five years ago we had a day service. Eight eight five five one one zero zero. I also received an email confirming all of these details. Yes, I'm now at 28 to 30 Cowgate, which turns out to be a fairly usual post office, even though I was informed that I couldn't bring my child with me either, because only one person would be allowed in the appointment. So I also had to leave my child with, with people looking after her today as well, which turns out to be probably not the case. Of the child, 20th of May nine, uh, 2000, 20, 20th of May 2000. Yes, I, I, I'm sure it has been booked. Well, they've been told that they've been, they, they, they've told me, Mrs. Webb has told me, that she, she was informed she isn't allowed to, to process children's priority applications. Now, maybe you can inform her, but she's told to, in those circumstances, to call the advice line and receive further guidance. So you are empowered now to say to Mrs. Webb that she can do it after all. Well, yes, it's 28 to 30 Cowgate, which is what your colleague Mark gave me. Yes, of course, the, the email confirm, with the confirmation and the same address has come to my email. Sure. Yes, it's a child renewal, yes, I'm saying, yes. Mm -hmm.
Yes, David. Mm-hmm. No, it was very, very clear that it was for a child. That's why they told me I couldn't have the single day service. We had a long discussion with your colleague Mark, which hopefully has all been registered on, on tape. Yes, because I can then confirm exactly what I said. And Well, they told me I couldn't have a single day anyway because the children have now not got that available anywhere in Britain, not even at the London Passport Office. He also, Mark, your colleague Mark also told me that the first available um, appointment at the London Passport Office um, would be on the 31st of July. Well, I'm already going in the morning. I've already got the, the, the tunnel ticket booked then. So... Well, is what? But another appointment at another place, which will say it can't do children, or what? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, the one week would be something. At least I've got a chance of getting her on a, on a, on a, on a plane. From there will obviously be an, an awful lot of extra expense. And, and none of the guidance available online has tell, bothers to tell the public, because of course we have no right to know these things, that the, the, the one day service. Sorry, could you just repeat that for a second, uh, David? Could you repeat the last 10 seconds? No, but what, but the thing is it does say so on the on the on the on the printed pamphlet that's put, distributed through all the post offices, which is what I had. So so um so, so yes, I'm sure that if I dig hard enough on on the website that I find it, but then I find a lot of contradictory information coming from one one source and another. I'm sure that I could find, you know, a lot of different um, things being said at different times, and and quite frankly, it makes it very difficult to 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 uh, behave, you know. Hmm. It's a daughter. Her, her name is Sophie. Yes. I need a real passport office, don't I? One that isn't... Uh, your colleague Mark didn't seem to know that Cowgate isn't, isn't a full passport office.
Well, the 6th of August, I'm not here. The 6th of August, I'm in Moscow. I must leave on the 31st of... I've got... To, I've got... Basically, on Thursday morning of next week, 31st, I have a, I have a tunnel ticket um, for the early morning. I can't afford to, to, uh, to let that lapse. I paid £403 to get through the tunnel and go back again. I came by car because I needed to collect a mobility vehicle for my wife, who is disabled. Yes, but I can go to the appointment. My parents are too old to attend the appointment. They're 75. OK, it's a big ask anyway for them to be looking after my daughter for another week afterwards. But to do it for three or four weeks is going to kill them. And, sh and, they, and they can't go into central London or come up to Peterborough for, for an interview. No, the actually the closer one for me would be the uh, the central London one, but they told me that I had a, that I had no chance of a, of an appointment before then. Maybe you can do it for me. Well, it would be good because I mean it would be good if you had some clout because obviously your office has really caused me rather a lot of inconvenience and uh, provably. Well, I'm sure you can do better than that, David, because I mean your your office has really caused me a lot of expense. Well, that's weird. really, I can't, I can't book up an appointment where I know that I won't be able to be there. That's irresponsible. Why can't I just turn up? There must be some way. But there must be some, some, some way when an emergency like this happens, especially where the passport office itself has messed up, like they have in my case, that, that, that by way of some kind of compensation that I can at least get put in quickly. The 12th of August, when I'm not here, I'm in Moscow. You want me to come back from Moscow in, in addition? It really makes the cost of these premium services pale into insignificance, doesn't it? Why don't you just have a £500 service for people that really need it? I'll come here, pay that, rather than come all the way back from, from, uh, from Moscow or put my daughter on the train, and then you can make sure you've got a super-duper fast track and make a load of money for the government, which you need, and, and I'll be happy and you'll be happy. Why don't you do that? You can pass that up the line, that, that idea. I know you are. I'm trying to help you as well. Well, we, Hemel Hempstead's nearer London than Peterborough by quite a long way, but, uh, but, but, but Mark suggested Peterborough. He said that there was this lovely new passport office in Cowgate. You can get me in Peterborough, but can they do fast track in Peterborough? You're sure? Yeah, Aragon Court, yeah, you're talking about. Well, Thursday's impossible, so, so, so yeah, the 28th then, in that case, it has to be. Oh, then the 29th, because, because Monday I'm actually booked up with, with clients in London. 
Tuesday, yes, at, at 9.30, then I'll have to get up at the crack of dawn again and come up here again. This time with queues, of course, because it won't be a Saturday. <clears throat> but it's my only chance, isn't it, really? Are you sure that they can? Are you sure that they can deal with? Um, but they can do. They can do seven days at uh, Peterborough. Yeah? But my parents don't have to. But uh, they will then send it to me by by some kind of courier. Yeah, to Hemel Hempstead. And my parents will be able to, to sign for it. Okay, so please email me that appointment. 88551100, same reference number. Okay, but, but please email me the, 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 the confirmation of the appointment time because I want to have that, that in, in writing because I'm sorry, nothing against you, David, but as you can see, I've already got a history of being pushed around. Right, I accept the apology, but please, let, please let's have it done properly this time. Yeah, I hope that this turns out right. <clears throat> Are you going to email me the? Have you got my email there? I received the email previously. Yes, so it'll be on the same one. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. So Thank you for the use no, of the no, phone. No, that's absolutely fine. Um, <coughs> obviously someone um, has uh, got confused, shall we say, to put it politely. So I'm coming back to Peterborough on Tuesday. The, yeah, absolutely, but they booked you in at Aragon Court. Yes. Hopefully you won't be sent here again with the best one in the world. They don't want to see you here. I'll tell you what, Jackie, if they send me here, I won't come. How about that? <laughs> Um, where he'd even got that price from, I don't know. That price bears no relation to anything that we process here. Mm. And even had he set, well, mind you, I don't suppose she'd mind, because the only way we could have processed it here mm. is to charge an adult price, but an extra 20 quid would be no <laughs> Really, in, in comparison with what oh, I'm having to absolutely. pay, it's nothing. However, it does seem surprising when you've been told they can't do a seven-day service for a child, that they now can. They couldn't do a one day. day. They, they couldn't do a one, do day. one day. Yeah, they can't do a one day service. They need seven days to make the check. So they're not going to offer one days for children. But no. five years ago they did, and 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 the same pamphlet is being given out today that was given out then. Well, I know because I did it. I remember yeah. doing it. I've got that pamphlet even in my pocket that was done that same day, during one day. It was. Difficult enough then because they decided to re to change the requirements during the middle of the day and call my my f uh, f family in Hemel Hempstead because they couldn't call a foreign mobile number. They called no. me and I, but thankfully I had that other piece of paper with me anyway because I I expected them to ask something like that. Right, and well, then well, the and then they looked at it with an morning. awful lot of, of 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 kind of like they looked at it and thought, is this a forgery? He didn't know about this, but I'm I'm an accountant, so I'm used to preparing extra bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, yes, but as you say, I, but nobody is aware of where you were supposed to be coming. You must have mm. been surprised to see post office rather than passport. Mm, absolutely. I walked sure up and down here. I was down Cross Street. Street. I was going further down there. Up and around there again. All you needed to do was to talk to the lady in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. Right. Uh, thank okay. you. Sorry to interrupt your no morning. Right. No okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, Jackie. You. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay, so here I am back on my way down back to Hamel Hempstead on the A1. A1 is just looks the same as a motorway at this part. Not on all of it though. It's got roundabouts and other things on it. For example, here, end of motorway half a mile. A1 was like the main A road going north-south and M1 was the motorway that kind of went up, not exactly in parallel to it, but you know, like a, almost like a companion. Um, so people that wanted to, to, use, to have cafes and everything. There was a brand of cafe that was 
set up on the A1 called Little Chef. They're still going strong, so you'll get these roundabouts, and, and usually at the roundabout you'll get something like a Little Chef. Um, Little Chef isn't only on the A1, but it's. I think it's... I don't know if it's in everybody's mind, but certainly in my mind associated with the A1. If you travel up the A1, that'll take you pretty much to York, or even further, in fact. Um, A1 is a longer road, one of the longest roads in Britain. Um, possibly the longest road in Britain, for all I know. Um, I'm not an expert on Britain and, and never really became one. I wouldn't say no to knowing a bit more about Britain, but you know, there's a limit to how many countries you can know a lot about in detail. You might say, well, look, hang on, you come from this place, you should know things. Well, over the last 25 years, which is half, half of my life, I suppose I've lived in Britain. Uh, well, I left at 26, didn't I? So I, I think... Um, did I? Yes, because I left in 1991. And I'm born in... in four, I left at 20, the age of 27. So I had two years there from when I was 25, in that second half century, if you like. And since that time, I had another um, A14, that's not exactly what I want. Um, I had another, um, uh, well, I had a, a, a period of six months where I, where I lived here non-stop. I had um, a period while I was in Poland for, during the 1990s where I'd come over every couple of months and then stay maybe a week and, and do things. Um, perhaps go into the London office and do things like that. That was, it seemed as though I had regular contact then. And, you know, now I go sometimes, you know, th three, four, five times a, a year, often with just the, uh, the plane, sometimes driving, but rather rarely driving. So, um, yeah, I've got to, to say that uh, if you add all that together, that means that... Oh yes, and there was a period when I worked for Clean Away, which was uh, one, one year and... Yeah, which was actually a year to the dot. So um, I knew a bit from then as well. So since the age of 27, if you add it all up together, it maybe comes to two years of being here. Three years max, even if you add all the small parts together. Five years from since the age of 25, so before the age of 25, I had also had a couple of times away. So I have in total spent 